Hello and welcome to uh, the course on manufacturing automation. As I said in the introductory part that this course will basically focus on the automation of uh, manufacturing industries and manufacturing processes including the manufacturing automation. And this course is uh, intended for a, a wide audience including the uh, engineering undergraduate and postgraduate students and the practicing engineers as well. Now, uh, let us say the manufacturing automation what it stands for. First of all, the word manufacturing came from uh, the two words manus and factus from the Latin words and that does mean that doing by hand. Well, uh, when this word was coined, when this word was uh, generated, the concept of manufacturing I mean, there the scale of manufacturing was much less than what we can see these days. Population was much less and that is why the demand on the manufactured products was much less than what we have right now. So, therefore, uh, in our days instead of doing by hands, now we are using the machines and subsequently the machines are being automated. Now, what does it mean that we are using the machine meaning that we are replacing the muscles, tendons uh, of a manpower of a human being to mechanization to different kind of machines. And also those machines have to be controlled. So, that control technology is our brain memory these are now replaced by the uh, control technology. So, therefore, mechanization and the control together they make the automation in the following way. This is what we are calling as uh, the automation that is the mechanization and the uh, and the control technology. So, therefore, as a definition the manufacturing automation can be said that this is a term applied to all measures taken which will cause a process to be carried out wholly or partly according to a previously set program and that is without the intervention of the human activity for its control because the control is given by replacing our brain, memory, nerves, etcetera. Here it is like muscles, tendons they are replaced by the uh, mechanization. This is we have the uh, for example, we have uh, the muscle power here okay, which is replaced by the mechanization which is a kind of a machine and we have the uh, brain power of the human being which is replaced by the control technology and together they are actually making the automation. So, therefore, this is a trend of science and technology which causes a process to be carried out according to a previously set program without the intervention of the human activity for its control. Well, if that is a truly automated system that must have three criteria. Okay. One is that it has to have an ability to make a decision that is the first thing. Second thing is the ability to carry out these decisions and the third is the ability to evaluate and correct the performance. Now, if you see this. Uh, these three criteria the ability to make a decision to carry out the decision and to evaluate and correct the performance this is what we do every day. Meaning that suppose we have a, an object and we have to put that object in our pocket. So, before we do that we decide that we have to put this pen in our pocket and then we try to do that carry out this process. So, we take this pen by our hand grip is so that to lift the pin and then we take the minimum path to take it into the pocket. And we always see that this process is followed exactly and I am not keeping that pin like this, I am keeping that pin just following the minimum path. So, what we are having is this actually the decision making, evaluation and feedback and the physical action they are carried out and in this way for example in the shown in this picture. Here what we are having is that we have the ocular control 
which are our eyes, we have the brain and we have the hand which is actually doing the things. So, through the ocular control and the sensory pathway and the motor pathway as it is shown here, we are actually following the decision that is the decision has been made for example, to put a screw in the uh, threaded hole. So, the brain is taking the decision that we have to put that thread in that threaded hole and that decision is going through the sensory pathway to the brain and the brain is giving the comment to the hand to carry out the decision. Now, when we are putting the thread, putting the screw in the threaded hole, whether it is going rightly or not, this is being controlled by the ocular control. We are looking at it and if more torque is required, we are actually giving the more torque or less torque accordingly and this is being controlled continuously. So, this is what the human being is doing uh, for day to day activity and this same thing we want to replicate in the automated system. Therefore, automation is a technology concerned with the operation of mechanical, electrical and computer based systems to operate and control the production. Now, this technology will of course, include the automatic machine tools to process the parts or the automatic assembly machines if this the assembly automatic assembly is being carried out. It will have the industrial robots to help the manufacturing process or the assembly process. It will have the automatic material handling and storage system. Material handling and storage system means that when one part is made in a machine, that part has to be carried over to this next machine for the subsequent operation and this is not done by the a human being anymore. So, there will be industrial robots to help the parts to be carried over from one machine to another machine for the further operation or for one sub assembly from one machine or one workstation to another workstation. Automatic material handling and storage system has a great role to play here because it has to not only transfer the parts, but it has to transfer the part in a right orientation and whether that orientation is maintained or not that is actually one of the responsibilities of the material handling and storage system. Next is that automatic inspection systems and quality control. Uh, in the automated uh, uh, systems or automated manufacturing, mostly this kind of automatic inspection is in built in the machine itself. That means, when the machine is producing something or the machine is assembling an assembly whether the, the it is doing rightly or not, this kind of signals will be generated and the feedback will be go, given to the same machine, so that the machine itself can correct. So, these are called the you know these uh, feedback systems okay, and those we will discuss at a later stage of the lecture. Next is the feedback control and computer process control as I said. And the finally, we will have the computer system for planning, data collection and decision making to support manufacturing activities. All right. So, if you see here, these are the technologies which uh, the automation will include. They are practically the same as we have in the mass production. For example, the mass production is also a technology which is involved in producing the manufacturing parts. Okay. So, what is the difference between the mass production and the uh, automation? Let us see. Actually, we can say that the automation begins where the mass production leaves off. What does it mean? We can say that the automation is mass production applied to the point where the substitution of human labor and the human control by mechanical labor and mechanical control is made complete or nearly complete. Automation as you can say that this is a changeover from the mass production and it will not come overnight. It will be coming gradually and that is why many of the techniques of the mass production will be used in the automation as well. We cannot throw out all the uh, techniques, all the uh, you know mechan mechani mechanisms from the mass production and many of them will be adopted to the uh, automation. However, the basic thing is that it is the uh, substitution of the human labor and the human control by mechanical labor and the mechanical control, which is either complete or it is uh, nearly complete. Okay. As I said that it cannot be done overnight. 
So, at this point therefore, uh, there is a question uh, that will arise that whether it will create the widespread unemployment, will it be the result. So, we can have the argument uh, for and uh, against the automation uh, on that issue and uh, we should actually tell that uh, the automation uh, what it is doing is that eliminating the human labor which is going on for thousands of years. It is not the first time that we are doing it and this is being done the mechanization of labor has not only released more of man's time and energy for other pursuits. It has led to unmatched material prosperity and increasingly better use of natural resources. What does it mean? That when one person was doing something the productivity or the production rate was much less than if it is being done by uh, few of the persons. Okay. And the other thing is that one process is earlier one process was being done by several people. So, now because of the mechanization, because of the automation gradually we are trying to free those people, those who are involved in the same activity and they are actually doing the other jobs requiring the higher skill. For example, designing for example, they are actually installing something, they are designing the end product, they are designing the control technology and so on. So, greater productivity of the mass production has opened and enlarged many fields of employment like designing, production, maintenance, packaging, distribution, selling, advertisement, etcetera. So, these are the uh, areas which actually are giving the more employment. So, we are creating new kind of jobs. I will give you an example. Suppose you open up any uh, let us say Sriram Honda uh, generator okay, or uh, a pump. Okay. Now, if we open the pump, you will see inside the pump there are many small parts like nuts, bolts, washers, springs. They are not made by the company which is making that pump for example, let us say Kirloskar pump. So, Kirloskar is not making the small parts which are there inside the pump for example. Why? Because they have found out that it is economically not feasible to manufacture them Okay. Rather, they will concentrate on manufacturing the basic units, basic parts which are required for making the pump, for assembling the pump. And what they are doing is that they are asking some other manufacturers to produce those small parts for them. So, those are the ancillary industries which are being generated because the Kirloskar is has started making the pump. So, the automation similarly is generating more and new works, new uh, workplaces and generating employment. So, it is not only not creating unemployment, but it is generating new uh, you know jobs. It has also made possible the phenomenal expansion of the material processing industries like metal working, fuel, rubber and synthetic industries for example, which were not there earlier when the automation was not introduced for example. So, what we see is that this is the manufacturing then when two persons they are actually involved in making parts for a very longer time. And then subsequently what we have is that manufacturing now where you can see that very few people are involved in the production and that too they are not operators, they are actually the managers, they are the uh, people who are observing and with a higher skill whether the manufacturing process or the assembly process is carried out properly. And what we see next is the manufacturing soon which is our dream which has not uh, which has been tested over, but it is not very successful till now where you can see there is no uh, person involved in the production as it is. These are all automated production, automated machines, automated flow lines, we have the um, automatic storage system, we have the AGVs automatic guided vehicles which will replace the, auto, the which are actually working as a material handling system and so on. So, this is our dream which is uh, going to come very soon for which we have to put some effort. What are the benefits of automation let us see. Benefits are manifold as in the course of uh, as previously I said. First of all the reduction or total elimination of tedious and the routine operations like loading, unloading, assembly, inspection, etcetera. As you understand that these are the processes that is loading, unloading, inspection. These processes are very tedious 
and uh, a person, uh, human being gets very quickly tired out of that. So, basically if we can automate those kind of processes, then not only we will reduce the uh, unnecessary works which are taking a lot of time, but also we are, we can increase the productivity. Now, second point which is the very uh, high beneficial for the automation is the creation of new and more interesting jobs. That is what we said, I said just now that uh, these jobs creating that new interesting, mo more interesting jobs will uh, be of uh, higher skill and uh, in future the production will have less number of, uh, uh, of operators, will have more number of people who will be involved in the management, will be involved in the design, who will be involved in the design of the end products or the assembly and so on. So, those are the higher skills which will be required for the people who are being involved in this new and the interesting jobs which will be created by the automation. Next point is the increase in the productive capacity of uh, the industry and uh, the basic reason how we can increase the production rate or the productive uh, capacity of industry is that we are eliminating the uh, time consuming jobs like for example, the loading, unloading, uh, inspection for example. Okay. Now, the another reason why how we can increase the productive capacity of industry is that we can design the new type of machines which can perform uh, different kind of jobs at the same time. So, in that way the uh, productive capacity or the production rate is increased. Next point is the greater flexibility through the use of standard production units which can be rearranged and assembled in different ways to get the end product which actually is an example of the um, building block technique. Okay. So, many of you must have played uh, in your uh, childhood with the Lego or with the small blocks and using those blocks in a different way you could have made a uh, house, a home, a ship, a, an aeroplane and so on. So, these are the building blocks techniques which also can be applied to the uh, automation and here the flexibility will be increased. That means, the building blocks will be the standard products, but the final product using those standard products can be very different. So, there we have the lot of flexibility in this. Uh, next point is the higher standard of living, if the automation is used correctly, in that case we can increase the production rate, we can uh, decrease those, uh, de decrease the time where the uh, production uh, process is taking very uh, time consuming processes, so we can decrease that time and that way we are increasing the, uh, the profit and that profit when distributed will be uh, given to the people who are involved in that. So, the overall the standard of living will be higher. So, that is overall the answer to the question whether the, uh, the automation will create unemployment. Now, let us see what are the reasons for uh, automation. That means, why we should go for the automation. First of all, we need the greater output per hour of the labor input. That means, we have to increase the production rate. Increasing the production rate will actually decrease the price as well as you know that and it will also increase the, the last point that we have said which is the higher standard of living. All right. So, that is the first thing that we, we should look for. Now, if we have the high cost of labor, only then we can justify the high initial investment in the cost of the machine and the equipment for the automation. Because the automatic machines, automatic uh, equipment they are quite uh, expensive in comparison to what we are using for the mass production for example. So, that can be justified if the high cost of uh, labor, if the cost of labor is very high. Uh, next point is the labor shortage that increasing labor shortage actually uh, forces us to go for the manufacturing automation. Fourth point is the trend of labor towards the services sectors, service sectors like for example, insurance, personal, legals, sales, etcetera. Many people are going to those sectors and therefore, we do not have uh, the people for uh, being engaged in the, in the production or the assembly. So, therefore, that is one of the reasons for going for the automation. Fifth point is the safety. Automation makes the workplace very safe. Take an example, suppose we have the uh, welding 
and the welding is by being done inside a, a closed area, inside an uh, automobile body for example, okay, or inside a closed room for example. So, the fume and the uh, toxic gases which are coming is very harmful for the operator. Whereas, in the automation we will have the different kind of uh, manipulators, different kind of robots which will be doing this kind of jobs and this is quite safe for the, uh, for the human being. Sixth point is very important point which is the high cost of raw material. Where we have the high cost of raw material, it dictates that we have to use that raw material very precisely and very carefully in the sense that we cannot afford to have the waste, we cannot afford to have the parts which are actually uh, reject. Okay. So, when the manufacturing automation or the automation overall is used, the rejects will be minimum and that is one of the reasons therefore, to introduce the automation particularly when the raw material cost is very high. Next point is the improved product quality, because it is being done by the machine and without the human intervention, so the product quality is very high. Let us give you an example, for example, suppose a human being is involved in the production process. Normally what we see is that from 9 o'clock morning when he starts working, the quality of the product is good. All right. At the end of the day, when the human being is getting exhausted, it is actually affecting the quality and the quality becomes poorer. All right. So, the machine when the machine is involved in either assembly or the manufacture or the, or the production process. So, there the machines do not know what is uh, exhaustion okay, and the product quality will be the same uh, 9 o'clock in the morning or 5, 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So, therefore, uh, along with the improved product quality was one more thing which is very important is the consistency in the quality. That means, all the parts will have the same quality level this is very important, this is very important particularly for assembly for example. Okay. Uh, point number 8 is the reduced manufacturing lead time, what is manufacturing lead time is the time between the uh, customer uh, when you are taking the custom, booking from the customer and up to the product delivery. So, this time is very important to maintain. If you are not maintaining that time that you are not, not uh, able to pro um, deliver the product in time in that case sometimes the uh, customer may reject okay. and uh, that is why you may get actually many of the rejected parts in the market. For example, in case of uh, uh, clothes, there are a lot of uh, rejected clothes that are very good quality and the reject is only because the lead time is not maintained. In case of manufacturing, this is important because the uh, capital will be locked. Okay. So, in case of manufacturing automation or in case of automation overall, this manufacturing lead time can be maintained because we know the exact timing for the production of that particular uh, part or for the particular assembly. So, therefore, this important point is, uh, is very justified for the, for, I mean automation is very well justified where we have this, is a, is this as a problem. Next point is the reduction of in process inventory. What is in process? In process inventory is the capital locking that means, we have the parts which are waiting for the assembly okay. and this is simply not required, this is waste in time because it is a uh, capital locking. Okay. So, in automation the in process inventory can be uh, reduced because the parts can take minimum time in the routing between the machines. So, that way the in process inventory can be reduced. And finally, the high cost of non automating that means, firms which are not automating they are actually with they will have the uh, they will not be able to compete with the other customers okay, and with other manufacturers which are using the automation. Thank you very much.